the Chief Technology Officer was started by the President uh, with this administration. Uh, and the idea is to help the President and his team harness the power of data, information, and technology on behalf of the American people and the world. And we're embedded in the Office of Science Technology Policy with the President's Science Advisor. Obama said if you use technology, there is no problem that isn't solvable. Now for somebody who's not American, maybe something German, this may sound like solutionism. So what do you base this optimism on? Yeah, I don't think he really said use technology. He was talking about if all of us get involved and bring all of our talent and we leverage these digital tools and technologies or synthetic biology or the genome and the work on precision medicine, personalized health, the work for cancer. If we get involved with the creativity of all of us, that's more of the message. And really, uh, here we are at South by Southwest with extraordinary artists, filmmakers, you know, makers, coders, uh, engineers, others who are working together, a very passionate innovation community from across the country and across the world. So what a great place to come say, you know, how do we get to the place where we have these things that can deliver food and we've got sharing services for cars and why don't we also include that kind of innovation on our most intractable problems? So, Poverty, climate, you know, and we can come together yeah. and it's really that teamwork together with the technology. Give me one or two specific examples how White House projects and we step over this sure. a little bit. Um, in terms of projects, how to alleviate poverty. Sure. Uh, what some project that actually have something tangible that mm -hmm. you can say, hey, this is what we're doing and this is what we're hoping to achieve. You know when you bring up your phone or look at the TV, you have to see the weather, right? That weather information, that multi-billion dollar industry, sits on top of government satellites and data like NOAA and others. Same with maps, you know, the map on your phone or mapping sits on top of US Geological Survey and others. So we've launched a project uh, called the Opportunity Project. So if you go to opportunity.census.gov, you can find data sets that are there from Census, from the Department of Labor, from Housing and Urban Development, our most important agencies that are serving some of the poorer Americans and all Americans. Uh, and you can use those data sets. And actually, on Monday last week, uh, we, we launched that Opportunity Project. And there's now, at least on there, already a dozen different players, for-profits, non-profits, others, who have built services. They've either added to their existing products that they're doing, or they've built services, whether it's the great schools team with schools information, and it's about where you live. So where's Head Start near me? Where, how, what about the transit to my job? So how do we help Americans have these tools to help themselves with where they live and the most basic essentials for their lives? So the president also talked about bringing everyone together, making sure everyone participates, mm -hmm. and that's in the country. But what about cross country? So let's talk about Canada. Sure. Are there any initiatives that the U.S. government has or is looking at with other governments, especially Canada, and what what, is, what potential do you see in these kind of partnerships? There's extraordinary partnerships around the world, and there always have been. Uh, the president started something called the Open Government Partnership uh, early on. Uh, I think there were first a handful of countries, now we're at over almost 70 countries have joined us. Uh, and so we just met in Mexico City. So the countries are coming and working on transparency and openness, and each country does a national action plan uh, for that work. So we've been working on that. Part of that is civic tech, and part of it is digital gov. We, in the present, talked about the work we're doing to bring techies into our government from Silicon Valley, Austin, Boston, our tech sector, to join our extraordinary technical and policy teammates who are already there to really bring and modernize how we're approaching our service delivery. You know, if we can make Amazon and Facebook and Twitter, why can't we deliver government services better? And it's a movement all over the world. And we saw, of course, with the Prime Minister's uh, visit this week, a co conversation about the digital government work that's already happening in Canada, that's also happening here, it's happening in the UK. It's happening in Kenya, it's happening in Chile, it's happening in Mexico, it's happening in South Korea. So there's about a dozen countries. Estonia is actually the furthest ahead, kind of combining their Skype team and others from that sector who have joined great government colleagues to deliver services on behalf of Estonians. So I think you will right. see it in Canada, That's great. like we're doing here. And Estonia is also one of the countries that teach coding at a really early age. Yes, yeah, so, so exactly. So right. the president uh, has launched Computer Science for All. We really want all of our young people, kindergarten through 12th grade, to be involved in computational thinking and collaboration and coding and user interface design and data science. You know, we talked about data science. We really could solve a lot of problems by diving into data science, whether it's in healthcare or in justice, criminal justice, or uh, social problems, or climate, all these areas. I want to quickly circle back to Canada. I know that the U.S. government has been using BlackBerry phones, and it's also obviously one of the greatest Canadian success stories when it comes mm -hmm. to companies. So in the context of the uh, encryption debate, what do you, can you share some thoughts on BlackBerry and the government's usage? 
Uh, you know, the president talked a lot today about encryption, uh, a little bit in the questions towards the end. And I, I think, you know, we don't comment on the current, current case because that's not appropriate. Uh, but he had uh, great words about his uh, sort of addressing the complexity of the issue and how we need to come together to really understand and, and decide the different options here. And also just reiterated his uh, support of strong encryption and the importance of privacy and other things. Launch code, tech uh -huh. hire. Tell yeah. me the latest. What's yeah, the so, latest uh, and what do you so, hope to accomplish in the next few months? Yeah, so tech hire is this incredible program to help uh, cities uh, anywhere to really use these short course boot camps, like two, three months, online, offline, different kinds of training programs that are fast to accelerate people from all across the country, all across the city into uh, these high tech paying jobs, you know, these great jobs. They're, these jobs pay 50% more than the average American salary. They're fun and interesting, collaborative. A lot of people just opt out of them thinking it'll take me you know, many, many years to train for that. Well, we want as many of our four-year degrees and two-year degrees as we can take, but we don't have enough. So the companies will suck them up, but we want more. And so actually Austin has just joined Tech Hire. We actually have 50 cities, 15 more joined this week. Um, and it's a collaboration be between sort of the mayor's office and the city government and the workforce and sort of job centers with the employer saying, hey, we'll hire from many different kinds of resumes. We'd love everybody in because we have too many openings. And then these code boot camps and new training as well as our tradition. Can you give an outlook on the next few months and years? It sounds like you're only get, just getting started. And also, what do you see with the private sector and their role, what they have to play and what they have to do to contribute? Sure. President Obama's done an amazing job just engaging Americans and working on our most intractable problems, you know, economic development and opportunity, social justice, uh, climate, um, health care and wellness and, and children and schools. You, you heard it today uh, in his remarks. And he's really done an extraordinary job with the tech community we're from of bringing us and giving us a seat in government. You would always see a lawyer or an economist or scientist, the Surgeon General would come in and out of our governments. And so the President's been really making a space to make sure in this cross-functional team we also have a chair for the techie, the digital innovator, to collaborate together on, on all of these problems. So we have almost uh, more than 300 people already who've come into the U.S. Digital Service, 18F, the Presidential Innovation Fellows Program, as well as our core CIO and CTOs teams across the agencies. Any initiatives you haven't disclosed yet that you're going to announce in the next few weeks or months? Uh, yeah, we don't usually pre-disclose stuff, but we're working like crazy to create the environment for more people to collaborate on all these projects, uh, whether it's Tech Hire for Jobs or Computer Science for All for the Kids, or programs like Connect Ed or Connect Home, you know, for this homework gap from school. Uh, on the connectivity side or climate work and stuff. So we uh, always do things that engage all the sectors. We call it all hands on deck. With the maker movement, smart cities, inclusive tech entrepreneurship, you know, how do we address these problems together? What can we do as the federal government? What can state and local do? What can those um, who are in the private public sector and what can individual citizens and, and students, you know, all the way down to our kindergarten students do?